Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the upgrades that I've done to the SAM-5. Now, if you're not familiar with this rifle, first it is identical to the Arsenal SAM-7, only chambered in 5.56. That's number one. Number two is I've already done a lot of upgrades back in May with Clay. We did a collaboration video where I went down to see him and uh, he helped me get a lot of the upgrades already done. I've done a couple minor changes to this rifle since then to kind of better prepare it for the tactical games, which I competed in just a couple of weeks ago. And then also to be ready for the uh, Clash Bash competition coming up here in October as well. Couple different things before we get into the video. Number one, I need to say a huge thank you to this video sponsor, and that is going to be Kyber Customs. If you're not familiar with Kyber Customs, they're a great hub for aftermarket parts and components for your AK. So I'd highly encourage you guys to swing by and check them out. They donated one of the pieces to this rifle we'll talk about here in just a second and i really do appreciate their support in addition to that if you guys are interested in kind of coming out and being a part of kalash bash there are probably still tickets available swing on by kalashbashtx.com and check that out as well it's a great weekend to not only watch some guys compete with ak's but also to see a whole bunch of different vendors that are out uh, supporting the AK market, see all the different types of products, maybe shoot a couple of different really cool rifles while you're there as well. Swing on by, check that out, that would be awesome. All right, so let's talk about this rifle because it has quickly become one of my favorite rifles in my collection, not only for just plinking at the range, but also in shooting competitions as well. I really, really do like this setup. Now, it's not perfect, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why it's not, but one thing that I can tell you is when I competed at the Tactical Games, I was the only one there not running an AR-15. I was the only guy with an AK and the only guy that wasn't running an AR-15. I thought that was really, really cool, and for not really knowing what to expect, I held my own. I held my own. I wasn't the best, but I, I beat a lot of competitors with an AK. So here's that piece. If you guys are interested in wanting to know about a rundown of the tactical game, sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to share my experience with you guys um, and uh, just kind of give you an overview of how I trained up for it and all of that jazz. Let me know in the comment section down below. In addition to that, what are some of your favorite upgrades? Tell me that in the comments as well because I love the upgrades that I've done to this rifle. Let's get into it. The first thing was Clay and I installed a JMAC two port brake on here that had the chemo uh, adapter for me to add a suppressor to it. Tactical Games didn't allow me to run a break. They only want like the A2 style bird cages or a flash hider. So I had to swap out the break for this four prong chemo JMAC Customs muzzle device and runs just fine. I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. I would say that the two port break does help mitigate recoil just a little bit, kind of keeps that uh, muzzle a little flatter, but I will more than likely swap this out for the brake uh, when I go down to shoot Kalash Bash. Um, or I may not, I don't know. Either way, it ran really, really well. I didn't really notice any muzzle climb when I was shooting fairly rapidly, but to be frankly honest with you, there wasn't a whole, uh, whole lot of opportunity to do like double taps or anything like that. At the Tactical Games, it was a lot of slow, methodical, long-range shooting and shooting at very precise targets downrange. So I didn't really have to worry about keeping the uh, muzzle flat like I might in a two-gun competition or something like that. Okay, moving back, the piece that 
Kyber Customs donated to the channel and kind of sponsored the channel is going to be the KNS Piston. And I really do appreciate them uh, doing that. And that's an area that I was really kind of confused on as to which one am I supposed to get? You know, there's all these measurements that you got to do and make sure you get the right one because realistically, there are so many different variations of the AK platform that KNS has to have different links to make sure that it's going to run properly. And so I talked about that with Tony from Kyber Customs and Clay, and they both said, hey, look, man, just get the Arsenal small bore. You should be fine. And sure enough, I was. So they donated that to the channel. I went over to my local gun store, uh, gun shop rather, and Ryko Gunworks, they kind of specialize in AKs as well. So that's actually kind of cool. Talk to Clayton over there. He helped me install this to make sure it was done correctly. I didn't want to bugger it up. And that's one of the areas that was kind of difficult with this as well, because the arsenals will weld their uh, pistons in and then paint over it. So it's really difficult to find where that weld spot is to start drilling it out. But um, Clayton over at Ryko, he knew exactly what to do, uh, kind of helped me through that, went ahead and knocked out that uh, weld. Took out the old piston, installed the KNS piston, and then allowed me to go out back <laughs> and uh, tune it up. So that was kind of cool as well. Okay, uh, KNS piston in the SAM 5, got uh, 20 rounds of M193. I've already tuned it up a little bit, so let's see what happens here. Right over there, 10 feet away. Hopefully you guys can see that. I should be able to. Should be able to see where it's hitting. And it's super, super soft. One of the other things that I decided that I wanted to do is move away from the Atero arms and the 509T. This is a great setup. It's very low profile. Your height over bore is very minimal uh, when you're shooting very close targets. And I found that in the local two gun competitions and tactical games as well. A lot of people were very impressed at how I was able to uh, you know, shoot at very close targets and maintain my height over bore adjustment as well. Uh, one stage you had to shoot at like 15 yards, so you gotta take your height over bore into consideration when doing that. You have to shoot at a lot of weird wonky angles and stuff like that, so uh, the people watching me shoot, they're like, you know, you really did a great job with that. And it's because of how low this sits, you know, you don't have to worry about a scope sitting up way up high. However, I did go away from the Atero arms and set up the primary arms 1-6 to LPVO attached to a Midwest Industries mount on the side here. I did that specifically because I knew that there was going to be a lot of precise shooting at the tactical games. Now the downside was I was able to kind of vet that setup at my local two gun competition. And unfortunately for me, with that Midwest Industries um, side mounted rail section, I couldn't get the proper eye relief. So as I was shooting uh, in the prone position and in the tactical games, there were a couple of situations where you had to shoot in the prone position. I basically had to keep the buttstock kind of away from my shoulder just to get in behind it to get the correct eye relief. Luckily enough for me, I was able to figure that out during that two gun competition here locally before I went to the tactical games. I finally decided, you know what, I'd rather go for speed than accuracy. I know it's going to kind of penalize me a little bit at the tactical games, but uh, ultimately I thought it was kind of the best decision. And so I went ahead and uh, swapped it back to the Atero arms. Now, since the tactical games, I've done a little bit more research and I've decided to go uh, in a different direction. I'm gonna get a Texas Weapon Systems railed dust cover. I'll take the Atero arms, 
mount off, which is perfectly fine. It works great. I've been extremely impressed with its durability, its ability to not lose zero and all of that jazz, but I need to have some type of magnified optic and I like LPVOs. So I'm working with uh, Primary Arms right now to uh, get one of their 1 to 10, their GLX 1 to 10 by 24 LPVOs to see if adding that railed dust cover will allow me to have a little bit more of a eye relief um, to be a little bit more accurate at longer ranges. Um, so I've been kind of beating around the bush. Realistically, what I need to do is hit an IDPA A zone at 100 yards. That is the kind of standard for the tactical games. If you can do that consistently, then um, great. With a red dot, that's extremely challenging. I couldn't even see where I'm supposed to shoot at 100 yards, so I just kind of put it right in the middle of the target and uh, let my rounds fly. So there is that. The other thing that I ran uh, in combination with the Circle 10 mags were these AC Unity um, 5.56 AK mags, and uh, they worked well. I was actually really surprised. I'd had some issues with them before because these magazines didn't fit up very well with my M85 from Zestava, but uh, these work perfectly for the um, SAM 5. They lock in. You don't have to do any type of filing or adjustments on this. They lock in tight. I really do like that. Now the downside to this was they have the last round bolt hold open followers on this. I don't like that. I, I, it's just not how I run things. So I went ahead and took a Dremel and filed that down. And now no problems whatsoever. It took all of like 10 seconds just to run it over a couple of times and now I don't have to worry about that bolt holding open so there is that. That pretty much covers all of the different upgrades that I've done to uh, this rifle and let me tell you like I said I really really do like this setup. It's going to be my go-to rifle for a lot of the different competitions that I shoot. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. I did as well as I could have expected at the tactical games. Um, even though I trained up for it, I was a little bit out of my league <laughs> because tactical games is basically like the CrossFit games with guns. And, uh, I think I did okay. I, I can improve for next year cause I am going to do it again. But uh, realistically, I'm excited to not only have done the tactical games, but also be ready for Kalash Bash coming up here in October as well. Again, if you guys are interested in being a part of that, I'd highly encourage you guys to swing on by KalashBashTX.com. Check it out. See if it's right for you. And if it is, come on out and watch us shoot. Uh, the general admission ticket should still be available. So you can come out and watch the shooting competition. And you can also uh, look at a lot of the different vendors that are going to be there. And probably, like I said, shoot some really cool guns as well. That really covers it for this video. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. If you haven't already signed up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, uh, swing on by and check that out as well at fitandfire.com. It's right on the homepage to sign up for that. You can get some really cool deals on ammo and gun parts, uh, also some training opportunities and a giveaway as well. So swing on by, check that out. I would appreciate it. Also subscribe, like, and share. You guys know the drill. I appreciate it. We will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. We'll see you guys later. Take it easy, y'all. Bye.